the financial and what has been referred to in the past as the criminal or personal history um, uh, components of privilege. So financial investigations um, under this would be limited to the sources of funding, the capitalization of the business. It would go along with an application for a business license. So a company would turn in all of their sources of funding, who their lenders are, those sorts of things for the actual license. Uh, a finding of suitability for someone to be a principal of a business would be limited to that person, their, their personal history, not their financial capabilities, but their personal and criminal background history, or if they're suitable to hold that type of license or not. Um, it uh, limits the background of personal history to 10 years. Um, in meeting with Metro, uh, Metro brought up on page 6, line 8, um, that they would have concerns with licenses that were specifically geared toward children uh, going back beyond 10 years um, for sex offenders and related crimes. Um, I believe in our discussions, the line um, 9 there on page 6 says, um, uh, sorry, uh, line 12. The department is authorized to require disclosure of any information that reasonably relates to the applicant's qualifications, acceptability, or fitness for an approval for suitability. Is that we could specifically ask if you're applying for a license that addresses or you will be working directly with children uh, that, that we would ask for them to list anything beyond 10 years for those, those um, things. So I believe that our ordinance covers that as it is. Um, we have also allowed licensing to accept all of the payments for um, uh, all of the investigations. Um, in the, the current, uh, under the current code, they ha uh, any applicant has to have separate checks, one made out to Metro and one made out to us. We've worked out with Metro where we can have our folks pay at the front counter in one check, and Metro builds us. We um, send that money to them. It's a great convenience to our customers. As well as this ordinance allows us the opportunity to um, refer applications in those financial those financial investigations to Metro or to hold them in house and to conduct the financial investigation with our own um, uh, auditors if um, that is in the best interest of the city. Um, and. We uh, also balanced this with some responsibilities for our business owners, as we talked about at the City Council meeting. And this requires any businesses or principals to notify the Department of any convictions, disciplinary actions that are taken against a, a principal. So if something happens either here or in another jurisdiction that might change your opinion on their suitability to hold such license, that they are obligated to inform us of any of those convictions so that we can bring them bring that license to your attention if there are concerns. Um, on page 8, line 2, we would suggest that we delete the uh, wording where the business holds a business license. Uh, on convictions, 
we don't just want someone's convictions, if it was for fraud or something like that, in a jurisdiction where they held a license. We would just plain want, if that principal had a conviction, that they report it to us. And I believe the city attorney may have some more detailed language that would make that clear. With that, I would be glad to answer any questions. Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on this item? So please come forward and say your name. Say your name. Yes, on the uh, page 8 that uh, Karen is referring to, um, on line 2, actually, um, carrying over from the end of page 7 on to line 1 of page 8, we would break them out. A principal has a continuing duty obligation to notify the department of being A, criminal conviction against the principal, or B, disciplinary action taken against the principal within the jurisdiction of the city or in any other jurisdiction where the business holds a business license. So that implements what Karen was talking about. We're interested in all convictions and, and no matter where they occurred and then disciplinary action from a jurisdiction where the business holds a business license. Okay. Thank you. I have a question. Reading further down on line, uh, starting with line three, page eight, line three, at the end of the sentence, it says, failure to so notify may result in disciplinary action. Why couldn't it read failure to so notify will result in dis disciplinary action? Well, that would be, if it was by a day, you don't want to be in the position of having to hold a show cause on them, bring them up before you, and crowd your calendar with something to say, could you get them in next time? Or, or to pull their suitability approval for missing it for one day. So what we're saying here is you have the authority to, to provide a show cause, a disciplinary proceeding, but you're not obligated to. If you want to be obligated to, we can put that in there, but I don't recommend it. And there's an intent Happened, uh, by accident, they missed the word. Right. Discretion. That's what I'm suggesting. I'll make a motion to approve this with the first time. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Uh, now we're down to citizens' participation. Anyone from the public wish to speak on any subject matter on our agenda today is free to do so. Please come forward and state your name for the record. Seeing none. Yes. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you all. Thank you.